MARPOL Convention Overview Welcome to Komodi Express, where we explore the maritime world. Today, we'll look into one of the most significant international treaties governing maritime pollution, the MARPOL Convention. Whether you're a seasoned mariner or just starting to learn about maritime regulations, this video will provide a comprehensive introduction to the MARPOL Convention. The International Convention for the Prevention of Pollution from Ships, MARPOL, serves as the primary global framework aimed at preventing marine pollution caused by ships, whether from regular operations, accidental incidents, or deliberate discharge of substances, such as pollutants or waste, into the environment. Initially adopted by the International Maritime Organization, IMO, on November 2, 1973, the 1973 MARPOL Convention initially has five annexes, Annexes 1 and 2 entered into force in 1983, and Annexes 3, 4, and 5 being optional. The MARPOL Convention was supplemented by the 1978 Protocol, which was introduced in response to a series of tanker accidents between 1976 and 1977. Since the original convention had not yet come into effect, the 1978 protocol absorbed the parent convention, and the combined instrument entered into force on October 2, 1983. In 1997, another protocol was adopted, introducing Annex 6, which took effect on May 19, 2005. Over the years, MARPOL has been continuously updated with numerous amendments. MARPOL contains regulations focused on preventing and minimizing pollution from ships, covering both accidental pollution and that which results from routine operations. Currently, the convention includes six technical annexes, each addressing different types of pollution. These annexes have evolved over time to accommodate changes in shipping practices, new environmental challenges, and advancements in technology. Many annexes also designate special areas, where stricter controls on operational discharges apply. MARPOL is a comprehensive treaty that sets out international standards for preventing pollution from ships. It covers a wide range of pollutants, including oil, harmful substances, garbage, sewage, and air pollution. By regulating these emissions, MARPOL aims to safeguard marine ecosystems and protect human health. Here are the annexes. Annex 1. Regulations for the Prevention of Pollution by Oil entered into force on October 2, 1983. This annex is one of the most recognized parts of MARPOL. It focuses on the prevention of oil pollution, both operational and accidental, and includes guidelines on oil discharges and the use of oil discharge monitoring systems. In 1992, new requirements were introduced for double hulls on oil tankers, with phased implementation for existing tankers to fit double hulls, which was subsequently revised in 2001 and 2003. Annex 2, Regulations for the Control of Pollution by Noxious Liquid Substances in Bulk, entered into force on October 2, 1983, effective on April 6, 1987. This annex sets limits on the discharge of harmful chemicals and includes safety measures for handling and transporting these substances at sea. It regulates the discharge of residues from 250 substances listed in the convention, allowing them to be released only to reception facilities until certain concentrations and conditions, which vary with the category of substances, are followed. In any case, discharge of residues containing noxious substances is not permitted within 12 nautical miles of the nearest land. Annex 3. Regulations for the Prevention of Pollution by Harmful Substances carried by sea in packaged form, entered into force on July 1, 1992. It focuses on packaged goods, ensuring that containers, barrels, and other forms of packaging prevent harmful leaks into the marine environment, prevents pollution by harmful substances carried by sea in packaged form, setting standards for packaging, labeling, documentation, stowage, quantity limitations, exceptions, and notifications. It defines harmful substances as marine pollutants identified in the International Maritime Dangerous Goods, IMDG, code, or that meet the criteria in the appendix of Annex 3. Annex 4, Regulations for the Prevention of Pollution by Sewage from Ships, 
entered into force on September 27, 2003. This annex sets out guidelines for the proper treatment and discharge of sewage from ships using an approved sewage treatment plant, ensuring that the seas remain clean and safe for marine life and human health. The discharge of sewage into the sea is prohibited, except when the ship has in operation an approved sewage treatment plant, or when the ship is discharging comminuted and disinfected sewage using an approved system at a distance of more than three nautical miles from the nearest land. Sewage which is not comminuted or disinfected has to be discharged at a distance of more than 12 nautical miles from the nearest land. What is a comminuted sewage? It is a sewage that has been reduced in size through a process called comminution. This involves shredding or grinding the sewage into smaller particles. Why is sewage comminuted? It is to reduce the volume of sewage that needs to be treated or discharged, to prevent blockages in pipes and sewage treatment systems, or to make it easier to disinfect the sewage before discharge. Annex 5. Regulations for the Prevention of Pollution by Garbage from Ships Entered into force on December 31, 1988. This annex prohibits the discharge of garbage into the sea and sets strict rules for waste management on board ships, regulates the disposal of garbage from ships, specifying disposal methods and minimum distances from land. Importantly, it imposes a complete ban on the disposal of plastics into the sea. All other garbage, including plastics, synthetic ropes, fishing gear, plastic garbage bags, incinerator ashes, clinkers, cooking oil, floating dunnage, lining and packing materials, paper, rags, glass, metal, bottles, crockery, and similar refuse are prohibited to be discharged to the sea. Annex 6, Regulations for the Prevention of Air Pollution from Ships, entered into force on May 19, 2005. This annex addresses air pollution, focusing on reducing emissions of sulfur oxides, nitrogen oxides, and greenhouse gases from ships. Focuses on air pollution from ships, setting limits on sulfur oxide and nitrogen oxide emissions, and prohibiting the release of ozone-depleting substances. It also designates emission control areas, ECAs, where stricter standards apply and includes measures aimed at improving energy efficiency to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from ships. The designated emission control areas set more stringent standards for sulfur oxides, nitrogen oxides, and particulate matter. A chapter adopted in 2011 covers mandatory technical and operational energy efficiency measures aimed at reducing greenhouse gas emissions from ships. What are sulfur oxides? Sulfur oxides are a group of chemical compounds composed of sulfur and oxygen. The two most prevalent forms of sulfur oxides are Sulfur dioxide, a colorless gas with a sharp, pungent odor. It is primarily produced by the combustion of fossil fuels containing sulfur, such as coal, oil, and diesel. Sulfur trioxide, a colorless substance that can exist as a liquid or a solid. It is formed when sulfur dioxide reacts with oxygen in the atmosphere, often under certain industrial conditions or in the presence of a catalyst. Why are sulfur oxides harmful? Acid rain. When sulfur oxides are released into the atmosphere, they can react with water vapor to form sulfuric acid, which contributes to acid rain. Acid rain can lead to the deterioration of buildings, harm aquatic ecosystems in lakes and rivers, and damage forests by affecting soil quality. Respiratory problems. Exposure to sulfur oxides, particularly sulfur dioxide, can irritate the respiratory system, leading to health issues such as coughing, throat irritation, wheezing, and aggravated asthma or bronchitis. It can also reduce lung function, especially in sensitive groups like children and the elderly. Climate impacts. Sulfur oxides contribute indirectly to climate change through the formation of sulfate aerosols. While these aerosols can temporarily cool the Earth's atmosphere by reflecting sunlight away, they also contribute to air quality issues. However, their cooling effect is short-term and does not offset the overall warming effect caused by greenhouse gases. What are nitrogen oxides? Nitrogen oxides refer to a group of highly reactive gases composed of nitrogen and oxygen. 
The most common nitrogen oxides are nitric oxide, a colorless gas that forms when nitrogen and oxygen combine at high temperatures, typically during combustion processes in engines or industrial activities. Nitrogen dioxide, a reddish-brown gas with a sharp odor. Nitrogen dioxide is produced when nitric oxide reacts with oxygen in the atmosphere. Why are nitrogen oxides harmful? Air pollution and ox gases are significant contributors to air pollution. They react with volatile organic compounds, VOCs, and sunlight to form ground-level ozone, a major component of smog. Ozone at ground level can irritate the respiratory system, reduce lung function, and aggravate asthma and other lung diseases. Acid rain, nitrogen oxides, like sulfur oxides, can combine with water vapor in the atmosphere to form nitric acid, contributing to acid rain. Acid rain can damage soil, aquatic ecosystems, and man-made structures. Respiratory issues. Exposure to high levels of nitrogen dioxide can cause inflammation of the airways and exacerbate respiratory diseases such as asthma, bronchitis, and emphysema. Prolonged exposure can decrease lung function and increase the risk of respiratory infections. Particulate matter, nitrogen oxides contribute to the formation of fine particulate matter, which can penetrate deep into the lungs and even enter the bloodstream, causing serious health problems like heart disease, respiratory infections, and premature death, contribution to climate change. Although nitrogen oxides gases do not have a direct impact on global warming, like carbon dioxide, they contribute to the formation of ozone, which is a greenhouse gas that traps heat in the atmosphere. Nitrogen oxides emissions are produced primarily from burning fossil fuels in vehicles, power plants, industrial facilities, and ships, which is why they are heavily regulated under environmental treaties, like MARPOL Annex 6. Under MARPOL, Ships must comply with a wide range of technical and operational standards. One of the central requirements is the installation and use of pollution prevention equipment, such as oily water separators, incinerators for garbage, and sewage treatment plants. Additionally, MARPOL mandates that ships keep records of their discharges and waste handling through documents like the Oil Record Book and Garbage Record Book. These records are subject to inspection by port state control authorities, ensuring that vessels comply with the convention's regulations. MARPOL is an essential framework for protecting the world's oceans from the negative impact of maritime activities. Shipping is the backbone of global trade, but without strict regulations, it can pose significant environmental risks. MARPOL helps minimize these risks by setting clear standards for pollution prevention, encouraging the use of cleaner technologies, and holding ships accountable for their environmental impact. By enforcing these standards, MARPOL has played a significant role in reducing oil spills, controlling the release of harmful chemicals, and protecting marine ecosystems from the dumping of garbage and sewage. To comply with MARPOL, ships must have comprehensive waste management plans in place. These plans outline procedures for collecting, storing, and disposing of waste in an environmentally responsible manner. MARPOL is a crucial tool in protecting our oceans and ensuring a sustainable maritime future. By adhering to its regulations, the shipping industry can minimize its environmental impact and contribute to a healthier planet. Despite its success, MARPOL faces several challenges in the modern era. As the shipping industry continues to grow and evolve, so do the environmental threats it poses. New challenges include managing the risks of plastic pollution, addressing climate change through the reduction of carbon emissions, and expanding the scope of MARPOL to cover emerging environmental concerns. The IMO continuously revises MARPOL to address these challenges. For instance, recent amendments have focused on reducing greenhouse gas emissions from ships by setting stricter limits and encouraging the use of alternative fuels like LNG and biofuels. The introduction of Emission Control Areas, ECAs, has also been a key development, ensuring that pollution is minimized in particularly sensitive marine areas. The MARPOL Convention has proven to be a vital tool in protecting the marine environment from pollution caused by ships. 
it has been instrumental in shaping modern shipping practices and has led to significant reductions in marine pollution over the past decades. However, as we face new global environmental challenges, it's essential that the Convention continues to evolve to safeguard our oceans for future generations. Thank you for watching. If you found this video informative, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content about the maritime world. Let's keep our oceans clean and safe together.